we, we are exclusionary in K through 8. We do not accept any transfers at this point. Should we ask our attorney to, to research that and come back with an opinion so that we don't run into problems down the road? Yeah. interested in any citizen comment on this particular issue from anybody in the audience <coughs> including any social studies students <laughs> <laughs> I saw that hand back there <laughs> Nobody in the audience? Going once? Twice? Uh, the next item would be held on March 14th. Everybody has a copy. Any additions, modifications, or deletions? I move we accept the uh, minutes. Uh, <laughs> Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? All opposed? Next, the business manager's uh, report. This is your uh, quarterly report, Pete. It's a big one. one. How business? Pretty good. <laughs> Page 41 addresses the uh, revenues for year to date as of March 31st. 80% of the revenues have been received. Uh, we projected, as far as revenues, as of 6.30.89, we project a surplus or excess revenues of $223,000. Mainly, this is going to be energy conservation money of 64000 We had uh, sinking fund interest of 52, And the cash balances of FY88 came in 84000 higher and these revenues that we project uh, in surplus have been budgeted towards next year's uh, cost to reduce the budget page 42 is deals with the expenditures year to date and we have expended 75 percent of our total budget here again we project uh, fifty thousand dollars will not be expended out of the anticipated expenditures and that has been carried over balances page 43 we're dealing with the enrollments in Cape Elizabeth uh, last month we had 1544 students this month we get 1543 students we dropped to one state uh, programs for this year we anticipate two hundred two thousand dollars in revenues we have received to date one hundred seventy eight thousand and have expended one hundred sixteen thousand most of these monies all of these monies will be received prior to June 30th and most of them will be expended prior to June 30th As far as community services, to date they have collected or received 270,000 and have expended 220. Projection as of 630.89 is $312,000 in revenues and 286 in expenditures, or a projected balance of 25,000. What do you do with the, uh, for instance, the community uh, uh, services? You have an interest on that money? No, that's just a fund per se. <coughs> All the monies, the schools, the towns per se goes into one. Yeah, there's interest earned, but it's. Who gets it? Where does it? Where's the credit go? It doesn't get credit to this particular community no. services budget, huh? No. So it could be the reverse. Sometimes most funds we have to you know, lend money from the general fund for them to operate. This case, this case, they're above 
They're above board by $50,000. As far as the food service program, uh, for the month of March, they had a income of $2,600. Therefore, the year to date, we show a deficit year to date of $8,500. However, with the $9,000 carried over from last June, we have a positive or a surplus cash of $475 year to date. And also tonight, I believe you will be, or well, we're looking for a motion to increase school lunches from a dollar to dollar fifteen for students and fifteen cents increase for uh, the adults. Okay, we're going to take that up. I'm not taking that up right now. Yeah, yeah, next next yeah. item. Okay, first before we get to the school lunch prices, any questions or comments? Okay, uh, we've had a full discussion previously that on school lunch during our workshop sessions. Just uh, during our budget sessions, tell the uh, people watching on television that the school lunch pro program is running a significant uh, uh, deficit. They will carry over funds surplus from last year that's been applied to cushion the deficit this year, which we will not have next year, in order not to run a serious deficit in the school lunch program next year. The board is considering raising the price of school lunches from $1 to $1.15. The 15% increase. This will be the first increase, I believe, in four years. I believe so. Four or five. Uh, so, food costs have gone up during that time. All costs have gone supplies, labor, etc. But there's been no increase in uh, in in the price. And so, uh, if you were to compare it to the consumer price index, in fact, over that period of time, the CPI has gone up more than this increase in school lunches that's being proposed here tonight. Is there a motion? Well, I move that we uh, accept the recommendation of the superintendent's office, and that is increase the school lunch prices yeah. next year from a dollar to a dollar fifteen. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? All opposed? Mr. Chairman, uh, this may be germane to indicate to you that in the backup, you will notice that I've apologized for my expression of jest about the cafeteria food in the middle school by letter to the various cafeteria workers. I now feel that I'll be able to have a cup of coffee the next time in one of the cafeterias. Now, our superintendent, I think that uh, that's appropriate, and uh, it also reflects well on you that you sit here before the cameras and apologize to the uh, to the cafeteria uh, workers. I know that, uh, that nothing was intended by your comment, and uh, I surely know that uh, it's one of those things that we all we all we all have a slip of the tongue when we're trying to be funny or uh, sometimes, and, uh, and unfortunately. Uh, People. We have great respect for the people who, who run the program, who work in the program, and I know you do, and that's why you apologize to them. All right, now, the next item under special items is a request from Don Richards for the Cape Elizabeth High School swim teams to go to Orlando, Florida from December 26, 1989 to January 2, 1990. Don, would you uh, come up here and answer questions? Would you mind doing that? I have the first question. I've heard of uh, baseball teams, particularly in Maine, where it's hard to play baseball uh, in uh, February, going to Florida to play baseball. Well, what, what's wrong with the swimming pool? You know? <laughs> Christmas vacation. There isn't anything wrong with our swimming pool. It's a team activity. And uh, it is a change of venue. Uh, it is a change of atmosphere. Um, certainly, I hope a change in climate. But by a change in climate, I think we're talking about a change in climate with attitude, with fellowship. Um, it is a trip that we have undertaken twice before. 
Uh, the rewards have been extraordinary when we've returned. Uh, the kids have learned to have to live with each other. They've grown as individuals. Uh, we certainly have come together as a team. Uh, you have before you the itinerary of what we plan to do for that week, so I mean, uh, there are a tremendous number of activities, both all wholesome, that uh, we want the kids to participate in. Um, at the time I wrote you the synopsis of the trip, uh, we thought we'd have about 36 going. Um, we have four complete families, parents and other children of swimmers in the family, um, four additional adults, and um, 37 swimmers so far that are intending to go. Any questions, Don? Just a question following up yours on the pool. Is the uh, Justice Aquatic Center, does it have an outdoors pool? Uh, it is an indoor-outdoor pool. Um, by that I'm saying that it has a retractable roof. Uh, it's, they close the roof at night and then open it in the morning. And they open it just before we get there. <laughs> the last year that we were there, um, it was not a warm December. And uh, so when they opened the roof, uh, the, the building cooled immediately. And uh, in the morning, we practiced 50 meters, which in swimming language is what we call long course, which Maine, Maine does, nowhere in Maine is there a 50 meter course pool. And um, that's one of the reasons that uh, we like to do this, because it does give an opportunity for children to stretch out while they swim, because it only means they, can, they only make one turn at the end of the 50 meters. And um, when we opened the roof, the atmosphere changed so dramatically that the pool turned to fog. And so as the youngsters swam away from me, they disappeared into the fog. <laughs> and, uh, Never been a hindrance to people. Oh, it, it was wonderful <laughs> because once they got into the fog, they didn't know whether I could see them. And I, <laughs> as a consequence, I mean, that it became rather chaotic. I mean, they just took, seized the opportunity to play, which was wonderful. But then when they got to the other end of the pool, I had already made my way to the other end of the pool. So when they came back out of the fog, there I still was. So, <laughs> so it is an indoor-outdoor facility. It has a 50-meter pool that we practice in the morning. We swim cross pool for 25 yards in the evening. It's 10 lanes wide in the morning practice. We share that with teams from all over the country. The year that we were there before, we shared that with a college team from Virginia Commonwealth. We shared it with a high school boys team from Michigan. We also shared it with uh, another team from California. In the afternoon, we practiced across the pool, which is 20 lanes. And um, in the ap that afternoon, we shared the pool again with that team from Michigan. We also shared it with Pittsburgh University's team. There's a separate diving well, and our diving coach went and took our divers with them. And um, they have an opportunity to dive and practice just like we do. So it's a great experience. Do they get coaching outside of our own staff, or is it just for practice, or do they actually get instruction? Do they, do they share from coaching from another school? Yes. Uh, not directly, but indirectly, because as coaches, we tend to wrap with each other on the deck and I might say to that coach from Michigan, well, what are you doing for a workout? And he or she would tell me and then ask me what I'm doing, and the next day we swap workouts. So indirectly they get some experience from some of the other coaches, but not, not a direct uh, uh, application from one coach to another. And this is paid for entirely by the students, right? Uh, that is correct. The fundraisers? Yes, we are. Yeah. Uh, we've been very fortunate. We have a gentleman whose uh, child is on our swimming team who runs a business that um, has been able to provide a major fundraising project for our, for our group of children. He's going to do this uh, one more time and maybe a third time. And in a three-week period of time, um, he contracted with nine individuals, and they all made their entire cost for their trip plus spending money. And uh, he deposited the funds directly to our school in the account that we have set up for this trip. And uh, he will do that again, hopefully, for another nine, and maybe one more time in the fall for another nine. So. Um, We've spread this out all the way through till next fall so that the, the kids on the team uh, can raise some money now for their initial deposit, have the summer to work and save their money for the rest of their, their trip. Um, I've explained to the parents that I do not want the parents to just give this to their swimmer as a gift. I want the kids to have to work for it because I believe that they'll enjoy it far more if they have a vestiture in the trip. So, uh, and I recognize that there may be a few kids who might not go because of this. But uh, we're trying to find ways to raise the money to help those kids over that hurdle. And that's, again, a way of bringing the team together. Any other questions? Fine. Uh, Don, I think.
think we have to we have to vote on this? Well, I think I think you need to know because uh, if if you approve of my trip, then you are allowing me to be able to use the school's transportation from school to the airport and back. Because I would rather have us meet at the school and have everybody go at once than have 50 cars arriving at the airport and just be seen there. I'd rather it be here than over there. And at the same time, uh, we rent vans to transport us from the airport to the um, venue and then to the various attractions that we go to daily. And uh, when we've gone before, because you have given us um, a, an approval to go, we've been able to have our insurance as a backup to the use of those vans. As proposed. I second it. I second it. Any further discussion? All in Thank you very much. We'll send you some postcards. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Next item is the uh, adoption of the school budget for the next school year, 1989 and 1990. The board has uh, had, I think, uh, three four sessions uh, on the budget. Uh, a thorough discussion, five. Five sessions, lengthy sessions on this uh, budget. Yet, uh, uh, yeah, one, two. I think maybe uh, just give a summary uh, for the people in the audience and the people who are watching. Uh, for, you know, three, four minutes of the budget. Uh, just uh, so you get some feeling for the process, the, uh, the budget starts with teachers, department chairmen, directors, supervisors, and principals. And then that budget comes to the central office. Uh, this budget has been cut considerably on all levels, uh, more than 350000 on the central office level. Then it goes to a series of five sessions we've had with the board. Uh, this year, uh, unfortunately, uh, we were cut in state aid because our valuation has risen some 27 percent. Uh, moreover, block grant monies of the past uh, are not prevalent uh, in the next budget the way they were. So basically, we've lost about 26 cents on the, on the tax base. <coughs> The board has accepted a budget that has gone last night, Mr. Chairman, to the council members and to the press this morning of 8066549 That's an increase of $358,722, or an operating increase of 4.654. Now, in addition to this, which is 70 cents on the tax rate, 70 cents per thousand, the board and the administration are asking for a bond issue to the tune of 1.3 million to do a three, two to three year capital project program. That's long overdue. That ranges in a series of roofs, accessibility, uh, digging out uh, oil tanks, removing asbestos, uh, removing carpeting that needs uh, new carpet, and just a host of things that we'll, you'll see published tomorrow in the Portland Telegram. So all in all, Mr. Chairman, what we need tonight from the board is a formal resolution that this is the board's budget that has gone to the council, and hopefully it'll return intact. Well, there's been a lot of discussion. The board has had uh, hours and hours and hours to discuss this budget. This is what you finally can have come up with. Uh, is there any further discussion? No, just one point of clarification. We're not talking about a, a bond issue, per se. We're talking about a, a bank a, loan. Bank right? loan. That's, That's okay. Right. I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, wait a minute. It's a, is, a link, is a difference. Does it have to be voted on by the electorate? I don't think so. I think it has to be voted on by the town council. Town council, town council yeah. as far as I know. Anyway, uh, 
Is there a motion to adopt the budget which Darrell has summarized? I move to adopt the budget as written for 1989-90. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? All opposed? All right, this means that this is the budget that we recommend to the town council and will be meeting with the town council. Do you have the dates? Yeah. May 4th, uh, 1 and 4. May 1st, May 4th. May 1st, May 4 and 7.30, I believe. On, right? Is that the end of their information? Oh, it's the end of your information. Yeah. Oh, here it is. On the page 3 of the blue papers, Town Council and School Board Joint Budget Meetings, Town Council and School Board, Monday, May 1, I'm sorry, 6 p.m. Check that? Probably on them. Downstairs. And then uh, school board meeting Tuesday. Let's start all over again because all right. I was looking for a pen. Right. On the town council and school board, which is probably a dinner meeting, 6 o'clock, May 1st, and then school and community services, May 4th, 7 30. Then our well, board. excuse me, the, the one on May 1st is not 7 30, is it? No, it's 6 p.m. Yeah. This is on page three of your blue paper. And you note that the next school board meeting is Tuesday, May 9th, and the public hearing and the budget adoption is May the 27th at 7.30 p.m. May the 22nd. Right? May 22nd. item is the school calendar, which uh, Darrell has uh, put in our packets. No different than any other school calendar I've seen around here, is it? They're all the same. Well, there, uh, there are some, you know, we try to come up with uh, what they call a basic uh, Cumberland County uh, attached to the vote school calendar. However, we have a couple of things that aren't quite like other people. However, I'd like to say something about this. First, this was uh, performed is the word because this is difficult to do. We wanted to try to coordinate the three schools. As you know, last year we had three calendars. And while we thought we were individualizing, that didn't work out as well as we thought. However, uh, the administrators worked on this collectively in the administrative workshop. We're asking for fewer uh, on the elementary level a fewer days or what we call a shortened day. That's proved very successful. The middle school and the high school would like to use some of those. We've asking for 12. One of the things we've done is we've increased the student days one day, and that's with an eye to governors, the governor's uh, bill that would add a certain one day of attendance to the uh, pupil attendance numbers. We've added five teacher days and five storm days for a total of 181 plus five. As you know, this year we've only used one snow day and hopefully we'll not have to use another. Now, if in the event... Hello, and, and, and it was on a day pretty much like today. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Which only proves that you can't win them all. <laughs> so, um, You'll miss me when you get Yes, <laughs> you <do. laughs> So there it is. If we can answer any questions, the administrative staff is here. And uh, uh, one of the things I might add uh, that we're doing a lot of planning on how we're going to use this time. And uh, I think it's extremely beneficial. As you all know, uh, one of the things that the entire state is crying for is staff development for uh, our people. These are opportunities to do that. 
Well, you have one interesting thing in here. You got a uh, you got an April. You've actually got a little mini vacation before the spring vacation. You got a Thursday, which is a half day, and no school on Friday. It's conference. Same thing this year. Yeah. Is it one and a half day? Yeah. yeah same thing this year. Yeah. Happened last week. Okay. Any other questions? Um, at, at two different levels, at, at the elementary level, um, are you still going to do the kindergarten the way you've done it this year as far as half of a half day? Barbara, please. I was hoping you'd ask. <laughs> Um, I noticed that Connie included that descriptor in the in the calendar, and in, f and in fact, while I don't have a, a formal counter proposal for you, we are looking at that seriously. We've not been satisfied with the um, real shortened sessions, trying to get both kindergarten classes in so that children would have um, school that day. Um, it was it was our first year to try something like that, and we're not satisfied. One possibility we're looking at, I'll share with you now, it's still being explored because logistically we want to make sure it will all work, would be to possibly offer an extended day experience for either the AM or PN session. In their transition to first grade, we're looking at giving children an opportunity to have lunch at school and perhaps a little extra time. So what we may do is have six of those days be a, a longer day for AM kids and six a longer day for PM kids, and they'd still have the total number of hours in class that they'd get otherwise. Okay. The, the other is the high school level. Um, last year there were parents that were very concerned that with the shortened days the same classes would be missed all the time. And I thought that was the reason that the high school switched to full days off instead of this schedule. And now I see we're back to that and I just wondered what the thinking was. We, uh, we, we felt that the, the advantage of having all the staff free at the same time was, was very important. And one of the things a high school can do is rotate the schedule. We do have a rotating schedule anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and we can certainly, uh, if that's a problem, and I think our teachers will have the same concerns, particularly the teachers that teach, say, on Wednesday afternoon, the last two periods will say, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, and we can easily do that by rotating periods um, so that we can preserve that. Um, the, the common time that we need with the elementary school and the middle school for common meetings and workshops and so on. Um. Okay, uh, do we adopt this calendar? Do we? Yes, uh, I would uh, hope that you adopt it this evening. This has been uh, the president of the association has uh, worked on this along with us. Uh, and I'd like the teachers to know, and the parents particularly, are calling in on what next year is all about. Well, one teacher is about to inquire right now. There he is. Um, you've indicated 181 days. And in our discussion, Daryl, you'd said that the 181 was predicated on the fact that the governor may get the legislature to add one more teacher day. Right. And you also indicated that if he did not, uh, then you would recommend that it be back to 180. Reluctantly, I would. I just wanted to have that as a matter of record this evening. Good. You're not in favor of, I mean, you, you want the, you, you're generally in favor of the longer school years. I'm you? very much in favor of a much longer school year. However, I know you are. Uh, until it's legislated, I don't expect that we're going to see it. But uh, you're right. I agree that if the governor doesn't win, we'll have 175 teach, uh, student days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you get that, Connie? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there a motion? I move that we accept the uh, new school calendar for 1989-1990. And there's your second. That's good. Girl. Seconded by the letter. All in favor? All opposed? All right. Now. There are two resignations, uh, Mr. Superintendent, that uh, they have given us. Mm -hmm. briefly, uh, yes, sir. I would. Uh, first, Susan Remillard, uh, who's been with us uh, for, I think, about a year. And uh, one who's been with us a number of years, Goodwin Hereford, 
who, as you all know, uh, was on sick leave for a while and now is uh, resigning. And I would uh, recommend that you accept uh, both resignations. All right. Is there a motion? I move that we accept the resignations. All right. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? All opposed? The vote. Now, <coughs> next is the annual uh, approval of uh, the superintendent's or consideration of the superintendent's recommendation of coaches in the Cape Elizabeth school system for 1988, for the next school year, 88, 89, and 90, for uh, the middle school and the high school. We all have a list of the coaches for the fall season sports, winter season sports, and spring season sports. Uh, I would entertain a motion to, uh, to approve those as recommended. I move we accept those as recommended. Second, John seconds Second. it. All in favor? All opposed? To vote. Mr. Chairman, uh, this, uh, the AD tells me, represents almost 95% of the coaching positions, and we'll bring you the remaining probably in September as those are filled. I just think it's also appropriate at this time to commend the athletic director uh, for an enormous amount of work and effort that he's put into uh, getting coaches and getting good coaches. Right. The, the, the point here is that his efforts, and I know he's, uh, he's expended a lot of his time on this, and he worked very hard to get good coaches from whom the children will learn and benefit in, uh, in these sports activities. It makes a big difference, and as a consequence, the athletic director is making a big difference to the kids. I would go along with that. I'm extremely pleased with his efficiency. As a matter of fact, we sent out the contracts on these today, and I'm very impressed that our AD is on top of all of this. All right, the next... Uh, I would like to add, uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. under our business, uh, the recommendation for a year's leave of absence without pay for the next academic year. You have a letter from Gail K. Edgehead in front of you. And I would uh, recommend that you accept this. All right. She's a science teacher in the high school science department. And we would look forward to her return. The superintendent has recommended that Gail Adshead be granted a one-year leave of absence without pay and be expected to uh, return in the following school year. Uh, is there a motion? Motion is made by Loretta, seconded by Peter. All in favor? All opposed? That's a vote. Good Any other business? I would just like to call your attention to, I think, something that's important. It's the pre-participation physical examinations for student athletes. Uh, this is a memo in your package delivered today from Keith Weatherby and Mandy Garmy, our school nurse. Uh, it's self-explanatory and I just bring it to your attention. Uh, also, Mr. Chairman, if there's no additional business, the superintendent would ask the board to enter into executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiations. All right. Uh, is there a motion to do so? I well, can I mention one thing before we get to that motion? Uh, we have spent five long days and, and some late evenings working on the budget this year, and I think it's important to realize that when you have an $8 million budget of any, any business or any, any school, it takes a lot of time and effort to put that process together. And I wouldn't want the evening to go by, even though the budget hasn't been uh, accepted 100% by the town council. I wouldn't want the evening to go by without at least uh, making a comment about uh, Dean LaBelle and the superintendent and the staff upstairs and to put together the budget. It's my first year of having gone through the budget process as a school board member, and I can honestly say that 
Uh, it is a, while it could be a very tedious and long and, and uh, gut-wrenching process to have to make these tough decisions, uh, the people upstairs have made this a, a, actually a very easy job for us this year, have done an excellent job of organizing the material that's been available, and have made uh, five evenings gone very quickly, which could have gone into ten evenings, and I'd just like to say on my behalf, and I'm sure others on the board, that I appreciate that. and. Uh, Look forward to next year's budget if we can continue with that smoothly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, job well done. Very well done. The, uh, both the superintendent and the business manager have put together the budget in such a way that it was easy to understand and easy to work with, and it was a rather difficult process uh, made pleasant by the enormous preparation put into it. All right, uh, is there a motion to go to executive session? No. Second it. All in favor?